Hi, welcome to the first episode of the Florida Nurse Blogcast, your news source for nursing-related news, public policy information, and commentary. My name is Ed Briggs, and I will be your host for this first episode. A new report from the Institute of Medicine calls on nurses to take a greater role in America's increasingly complex healthcare system. In 2008, the Robert Wood Johnson Foundation teamed up with the Institute of Medicine and launched a two-year initiative to respond to the need to assess and transform the nursing profession. Through its deliberations, the committee developed four key recommendations. These recommendations included, first, that nurses should practice to the full extent of their education and training. Second, that nurses should achieve higher levels of education and training through an improved education system that promotes seamless academic progression. Third, that nurses should be full partners with physicians and other healthcare providers in redesigning the healthcare delivery system in the United States. And finally, that effective workforce planning and policy making requires better data collection and better information infrastructure. The report also concluded that with the pending healthcare reform, the United States has a rare opportunity to transfer its healthcare delivery system and that nurses can and should play a fundamental role in this transformation. However, the power to improve the current rec regulatory, business, and organizational conditions does not rest solely with nurses. Government, businesses, healthcare organizations, and professional associations, along with insurance industry, all must play a role. Working together, we can all help ensure that the healthcare delivery system provides seamless, affordable quality care that is accessible to all and leads to improved healthcare outcomes. But for such a collaborative transformation to occur requires that nurses assume an aggressive leadership role. You can preview this report at the Institute of Medicine website at iom.edu. On this subject, check out the October 2010 issue of American Scientific. It contains a remarkable article detailing the failing of primary care in the United States, its impact on healthcare outcomes, and the role nurses can play in filling this vital role. A recent audit of the Florida Medicaid program will likely be used to support and oppose the expansion of the Florida Medicaid waiver program. About 2.7 million Floridians are presently on Medicaid, the health insurance program for low-income families, with another 328,000 expected to join in the coming months and years under the federal health care reform legislation. The Florida Auditor General's Office has released details of a two-year audit of Medicaid, which is on track to exceed $20 billion next year, and an estimated increase of $1.4 billion in taxpayer revenue. Among the more glaring findings in the audit, the State Agency for Healthcare Administration paid $792 million in 6,692 emergency payments to hospitals, doctors, and other healthcare providers that were not clearly authorized by law or supported by valid claims. The audit also disclosed payments totaling over $4 million to managed care organizations for Medicaid recipients who had died, with the state having limited success in recovering these overpayments. The report documents repeated incidences of poor documentation submitted by healthcare providers and nursing homes to support their payments, lack of clear oversight of the program, and limited monitoring by state agencies. House and Senate leaders have already pledged to renew attempts to expand the Medicaid waiver program to all Florida counties and ship traditional Medicaid recipients into managed care organizations, building on proposals that failed to draw consensus last year. State Democrats caution that expanding the Medicaid waiver program may result in harming Florida's most vulnerable populations, citing data from several reports that demonstrate outcomes in the Florida Medicaid waiver counties have not demonstrated significant savings to Medicaid, nor have they demonstrated improved health care outcomes for the participants. This is an issue we should all keep very close eye on, as it does impact on large portions of our population. For more information on this subject, visit the Kaiser Family Foundation at kff.org and click on the Medicaid link. The Kaiser Family Foundation is reporting that between December 2007 and December 2009, National monthly Medicaid enrollment rose from 42.8 million people to 48.6 million, as the nation's unemployment rate doubled from 5 to 10 percent. 
This rapid growth in Medicaid is linked to the present economic recession and is not related to the recent health care reform legislation. In addition to the growth in Medicaid related to the recession, the health care reform legislation passed by Congress and President Obama also expands the Medicaid waiver program to cover low- and middle-income families and individuals. I don't know if anybody's noticed, but this really is an election year. And the interesting thing is that the health care reform legislation seems to be a major issue in this election. The political ads are flying hot and heavy, both supporting and condemning the health care reform legislation. Now, many of us supported the current health care reforms. Many people say it didn't go far enough, and many feel it went way too far. This legislation has been a point of conflict, misinformation, and scare tactics. Unfortunately, the misinformation is stuck, and large portions of the American public don't really know what's in the bill. And of course, they wouldn't. The bill is over a thousand pages of legal speak. Even the federal summary of the bill is over 20 pages long. So how do we educate ourselves about what's in the bill and its impact on health care? How do we educate our patients, our family, and our friends? Well, that's where the Kaiser Family Foundation comes in. The folks at Kaiser Family Foundation have done it. They have created an animated YouTube that explains in detail what the health care reform bill does, how it will be implemented, and what the impact will be. This video is nonpartisan, it is very factual, and it is very plain spoken. I encourage everyone to check it out and share it with their friends, family, and patients. It is called the Healthcare Reform Hits Main Street. You can find it on YouTube. The FNA membership assembly was held September 24th and 25th at the Hilton Orlando. For members, there's an opportunity to have their voice heard on association business and help craft the future of the nursing association. The General Assembly made revisions to the organization's bylaws to address the regional restructure and develop goals and positions on key health care and nursing issues. Also during the General Assembly, the Florida Nurses Association acknowledged key individuals who made substantial contributions to our state. These award winners included The Florida Nurse Political Action Committee has announced its candidates' endorsements for 2010. These candidates have demonstrated their commitment to nursing and the health care of the state of Florida. The Political Action Committee asks nurses to consider these endorsements when they vote. And now for the interview. Janet Long is representative of District 51 in the Florida House and a committed friend to nursing. We sat down with her to get some insight in how the legislative process affects nursing and health care in our state. Can you tell me a little bit about your experience in crafting legislation that impacts on health care in the state of Florida? The experiences that I've had on health care issues since I've been in the Florida legislature have pretty much been limited to the votes that come to the floor because I don't sit on any health care committees. I can tell you though that I'm very proud to have sponsored 
co-sponsored the pill mill legislation, which dramatically made an overhaul in terms of the pain management clinics. And as a result of passing that law, I also have spoken and advocated before the Pinellas County Commission when they were voting on the moratorium in Pinellas. I serve on an advocacy advisory board to make suggestions to the legislature about how to strengthen the law that we've already passed in the next session. Also, I would like to share that I am very concerned about the upcoming reform on our Medicaid system. This initiative began last year, and I'm very confident that it will surface again in the upcoming legislature as one of the key priorities of the House leadership. What troubles me mostly about the way the bill is being crafted is that it models a pilot program that already exists in South Florida and Jacksonville, uh, which most of the very um, important and respected people that have been dealing with that system will tell you is an abysmal failure. So to take that system and put it down all across the state of Florida does not seem to me to be a very good thing for the people of Florida. And I hope to be able to provide recommendations to the legislature from a health care dialogue that I was instrumental in formulating last month in which 22 stakeholders from across the Tampa Bay region came together for two and a half hour dialogue on health care, where we're going with it, how the federal plan will lay down over the state and local governments. And so we're hoping to move from that dialogue, which was very spirited and very candid, to a health care summit uh, later this fall. So stay tuned on that. Representative Long, could you tell me what you feel are the health care priorities for the state of Florida? Well, that's a really good question. The health care priorities of the state of Florida are enormous to wrap your head and your arms around because the cost to our state budget on, health, on our health care system takes up one third of our budget. So for those of you who might be watching this, I hope you're paying attention because there's no doubt that we have to change the way in which we are currently conducting the business of the state. The dollars are, are just not there anymore to sustain the systems that we put in place in the way that we put them in place. What would you say to nurses who are interested in becoming involved in public affairs and public policy? Get involved in a campaign, get involved in uh, paying attention to what's going on in bills that have been filed that affect your industry, become part of your association, be active, be loud, and be vocal because the squeaky wheel gets the grease. And now for some news that you can use. After years of steady progress, the percentage of two-year-olds in private health care plans being immunized dropped last year, according to a report released today by an industry watchdog group. The study by the National Committee on Quality Assurance which measures how well plans ensure that members receive appropriate care found a disturbing drop in the rates of vaccination. According to the study, measles, mumps, and rebellion immunization rates dropped approximately 2.5% in 2009. Diphtheria, tetanus, and whooping cough immunization fell 2.3% in 2009. And chickenpox vaccination slipped approximately 2% in 2009. Health plan officials attributed the decline to parents' fears that vaccinations could be linked to autism. Though public health experts and government studies have found no evidence that vaccinations cause autism, the subject has been subject to fierce debate on the internet, and several outspoken celebrities have fueled this controversy. The Food and Drug Administration issued a warning on October 13th linking long-term use of popular osteoporosis drugs to an unusual fracture of the femur the drugs called bisphosphonates. The agency asked patients to report any thigh or groin pain to their doctors. At the same time, the FDA safety announcement emphasized that patients should continue taking the drugs unless their doctors advised otherwise. And, and let me give you a calendar of events that you can mark and hopefully I'll see you at some of these events. Thanks. Bye.